The NIDA Defender's investigation nine months in the making uncovers a dangerous problem inside our nation's hospitals. It comes right from the faucet. Contaminated hospital water harming and even killing patients completely undetected for months. Lawsuits, state health reports and published research documents infections in, hosp in hospitals across the country, five in the Carolinas alone since 2013. Safety experts told Nathan Morabito the attention is long overdue. He joins us now with more. Nate, what did you find? Well, they say hospitals and the government just aren't doing enough to protect all of us patients from deadly but preventable infections. In the cases we reviewed, researchers found dangerous bacteria in well-known hospitals, in sink water, ice machines, a patient shower, and a contaminated medical device. And by the time someone pinpointed and fixed the problem, sometimes it was too late. Betty Sue Martineau. She was the nicest person I've ever met. Put her heart. Yeah, good times with Betty Sue. Into everything. But her heart was failing. So the mother and grandmother turned to the world-renowned Duke University Medical Center for a heart transplant. Heartbreak followed less than four months later. As friends and family mourned her death. It's just a person you miss. This Duke-approved research shows the university investigated a multi-phase infection outbreak that would go on to affect almost 100 patients, all stemming from hospital water. Most of the illnesses confined to the hospital's new addition. Researchers concluded routine care using tap water and unfiltered water in a medical device likely caused the outbreak of illness linked to non-tuberculosis mycobacteria, or NTM. In the end, they linked 26 patient deaths. It's hard to talk about her. Betty Sue passed away in March 2015. Her lab results suggestive of NTM. The patient with a harmed or an ill immune system who can't find it, they are much more prone. Often found in public water, NTM are generally not a threat to those of us who are healthy. But experts say they are increasingly dangerous for people with compromised immune systems and routinely cause serious infections in people who come in contact with contaminated water sources. They say large health care facilities which have complex water systems and vulnerable patients are an especially challenging breeding ground. Patients can get harmed. Patients are getting infected. While contaminated water is routinely the root cause, the Food and Drug Administration warned a contaminated heating and cooling device that regulated patients' body temperature during surgery and used hospital water played a role in many cases across the country too. The manufacturer, Livanova, announced a $225 million settlement this year. But experts say it all starts with the water and how that water flows through the pipes. They're selling the design and the efficiency without thinking about the safety aspect, and that's not appropriate. Dr. Molly Scanlon, a public health expert with the University of Arizona, says we're building hospitals with unintended consequences an emphasis on efficiency, but the design often not taking into full account simple water management strategies that can prevent infections like NTM. It's unacceptable to have a child, my grandmother, whomever, become ill and die over a waterborne pathogen that was completely preventable. After the outbreak at Duke, which started in 2013 and stretched through 2015, the hospital installed water filters in operating rooms and made engineering changes, increased water flow to make it more consistent, better flush the pipes, strengthen disinfection of heater coolers, and implemented a sterile water protocol. But the health system recently acknowledged, despite comprehensive initiatives designed to minimize the likelihood of developing NTM infections in vulnerable patients, sporadic health care associated cases are known to occur. This was the dirty water borne bacteria that had affected so many patients before us. Greg Fisher learned of NTM years after the initial outbreak. How did this happen? His wife, Kate, received a double lung transplant at Duke in 2017. Just months later, records show an indication of NTM. The infection was nested in a lung. Doctors gave Kate medication to fight the infection with documented side effects. He says the treatment took a physical toll on Kate, eliminating her quality of life and kidney function. He believes that infection indirectly killed her. There were setbacks. Fisher's wife of 45 years struggled to fend off other complications. She was losing her will to fight. And in May of this year, the marathon runner, once so full of hope, it's just not the same and never will be the same, lost that fight just days after Mother's Day.
and Betty Sue's family filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Duke Medical Center dismissed this summer. Both her daughter and her attorney say they're not allowed to talk about the case in any way. Duke, meanwhile, told us it does not comment on litigation. Nathan Morbido, NBC Charlotte. Well, Nate, thank you for your reporting.